Welcome back to another episode of Off Night Radio Week 8 NFL Picks. I am here. I am back. Of course, you can catch me live on the speaker at Off Night Radio. We are live. We're back. For the first time, I am simulcasting live from Facebook Live for people who are watching on Facebook Live. So we're doing that. But we also are live on speaker. The chat lines are open. I'm live on uh, Facebook Live. So you can comment there. You can comment on, you can chat on the, on the speaker app. But we are here. I'm getting to my sponsors. This episode is being brought to you by CBDMD. Please go to CBDMD.com for your latest, your most premium CBD products. Um, CBDMD have premium uh, bath bombs, uh, 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 pet CBD products, uh, um, sleeping oils, gummies, um, and anything else you can think of with, um, with uh, CBD products. They have some of the greatest CBD products you can get online right now. So go to CBDMD.com, use the promo code MOTTO, you can get 10%, 15% off your entire order. That is exclusive to my off-night radio listeners, my off-night podcast listeners as well. Again, CBD, CBDMD.com, use the promo code MOTTO, M-A-D-O, you get 15% off your entire order. Time for me to get into my huge health tips.com sports headlines of the week. Um, hold on, technical difficulties. Let me do that one more time. Time, time for me to get into my HughesHealthTips.com sports headlines of the week. We are here uh, Friday. The Dodgers are the 2020 World Series champs. Uh, the first World Series they won in 32 years. Uh, they, the last time they won was in 1988. They beat the Tampa Bay Rays in six games. Um, they beat them 4-2. to two. Um and if you were keeping up on the off-night podcast, I was doing a recap of every single World Series game um, as they were going on. I was I was recapping every single game. Um, good World Series. Glad to see the Dodgers win. They spent the most money. They should have won. Not mad at that. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays just didn't have enough. Wasn't enough. Um, and they couldn't beat that high-powered uh, um, 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 Dodgers team. The Atlanta Falcons beat the Carolina Panthers 25-17 last night. Um, on Thursday Night Football. Uh, congratulations to them. They've won their second game of the year. And more congratulations to Raheem Morris. I want Raheem Morris to get a look as a head coach going forward. He's now 2-1 and one as the head coach since Dan Quinn has been fired and he's been out of there. Raheem Morris had been 2-1 and one with the Falcons. So let's see how far he can take them after Dan Quinn got out of there. Um, Ronnie Stanley. This is crazy. Rodney Stanley got $112 million contract extension. This man is a left tackle. $112 million contract, uh, contract extension and maxes out at $112 million uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. That's going to keep him with the Baltimore Ravens through the 2025 season. Um, he's, annually, he's going to make uh, $19.75 million. This is an offensive lineman, by the way. But he's still second. Uh, he's the second highest paid offensive lineman in the league after this contract. And last but not least, Trevor Lawrence of the Clemson Tigers. He has he has tested positive for COVID-19. And he will not play in the game against Boston College um, on Saturday. Um, I don't think it changes anything. The quarterback they're going to have playing for him, I can't pronounce his last name, but I know his name is DJ. He's going to fill in for him. I, I still got uh, Clemson winning that game. Um, a lot of the betters or, or, or uh, a lot of people who bet on college sports are going crazy because uh, Trevor Lawrence isn't going to be in the game. I think Clemson still wins the game, but make your bets accordingly. And then we'll get into my one good bet setting later on in the show. Um, before I get into my main topics, got to let you know about another one of my sponsors. Please go to avalocoffee.com, use the promo code OFF, and get 10% off your entire order, entire coffee order. Uh, Avalo Coffee promises to offer the premium experience. And please go to avalocoffee.com, use the promo code OFF, and get 10% off your entire coffee order. Order. Time to get into my main topics. Um, I'm a little bit upset about the NBA right now. NBA players, I should say, right? Check this out. The NBA players, the NBA right now is trying to bring back the NBA season uh, three days before Christmas in 2020, right? Now, we do know that the NBA season just ended in August, correct? Now, the NBA players are pissed that they, they only have four months off and they got to go back to work in the end of December and right before Christmas. So there are some NBA players, i.e. LeBron James and some others, that are saying they're not showing up until after the new year. In fact, they're lobbying for the NBA season to start around Martin Luther King Day because they want the extended break since the season ended in August. Well, for some people it ended in August. 
and they want the extended break, and they're saying that they're not even going to show up until uh, January. Well, here's the problem with that. Let me give you some facts. The NBA lost $800 million in gate receipts because nobody was in the stands. The NBA lost $400 million in, for $400 million in sponsorships and merchandise. And they are expected to lose another $4 billion in the 2021-2021 season without fans in the stands. That's without fans in the stands. And the league hopes to get back on track financially in the 2021-2022 season. So check this out. So the NBA players that are saying that they're not coming back to work until January don't understand that the NBA got a lot of things riding on starting the season before 2020. They're losing money in advertising. They're losing money in merchandise. They're losing money in the arenas because the arenas aren't open because there's no fans can go in the stands. They're losing money in um in the TV deals. And the NBA players have the nerve to sit back and say, I'm not coming to work. Ladies and gentlemen, the NBA is on the verge of, of beginning to operate at a deficit. Which is crazy. So you saying you're not going to work in, in about four to five years, that might not even be an NBA for you to come back to. So if the arrogance of these NBA players to sit back and say that they're not going to come to work because of they only had a four-month break. Check this out right now. The common man, the common, the working class man is not going to understand that. Some of the bums in the NBA are making seven to nine million dollars per year. Really a seasonal. You only play in six months out of the year. So you're making six to nine million dollars per year for only playing for six months. And you're complaining because you only got a four-month break instead of your usual break. The common man doesn't want to hear that. And I go a step further because I believe that the NBA becoming way too political is part of the reason why the ratings have dropped, is a part of the reasons why the viewership have dropped, and a part of the reasons why some of the sponsors have left. Um, And that's another problem that the NBA has to deal with. So the NBA players, I don't understand it. For you guys to sit back and say that your break isn't long enough and you want to come back during Martin Luther King Day, that's fine. But imagine not imagine not having the NBA to come back to. That's a bigger issue than you not having than you having um um uh, more than four months off in a in a in a unique year. This, this is a pandemic. You're lucky you're even able to come back to play the sport anywhere in a bubble or in an arena anywhere. You're lucky that you can even do that. So the arrogance to, to even sit back and say that you're not going to show up if the NBA comes back three days before December is nuts to me. Like it's nuts. It's inconsiderate. It's very selfish. It's inconsiderate. And just imagine a world where you don't have an NBA to come back to. Imagine that. Right. So going on to my next topic. Um, again, I talked about the World Series in my headline and my uh, huge health tip dot com headlines. Um, one of the one of the storylines from the World Series is that Justin Turner tested positive. For COVID-19, he got pulled out um, in the eighth inning of the Game 6 of the World Series. And um, when the Dodgers won, he came back out and celebrated. He took his mask off. He came back and celebrated with his team. Check this out. So the MLB right now is investigating. Um, they're investigating the matters because they're told, I'm being told that Justin Turner was told to stay uh, isolated from everybody because he was told he, he, court, he contracted Positive his positive test for COVID um, came back positive. So he, he was told to be isolated from everybody else, but they won the World Series. He said, "The hell with that! I'm going to celebrate with my team," and he did it anyway. So they're investigating. It sounds like that the, MB, the MLB is going to find him. Not so fast. Not so fast, Lucy. You got some explaining to do. So, if how did this man test come back positive after eight innings have already been played? That makes no sense to me. So. If I'm Justin Turner, and the fine is coming, he's going to get fined. When the fine does come, he should lawyer up and go back to the MLB and say, you guys should have alerted me about the positive test way before I even uh, stepped foot on the field, before they penciled me into the starting lineup. Because the MLB is culpable for this. What's the point of doing COVID testing if the results don't come back before the game starts? I'm going to repeat that. What's the point of doing COVID-19 testing if the results does not come back before the game starts? That was sloppy on the, on the, in terms of the MLB. That was, um, and for them, for them to try saying that they're going to investigate is them being, not being accountable because they're liable for this. They have a culpability into this more than they are, are taking about this. Now, getting to Justin Turner. Justin Turner, if you, got, if you contracted COVID, um, and then you ran back on the field. That was selfish. 
that was inconsiderate. But I, I get it. If I won the World Series, if I had COVID, if I had AIDS, COVID, all of that combined, if I had super COVID, I'm going back on the field so I can celebrate the World Series with my team. I'm doing it. I'm getting it. I'll pay the fine. Just turn it makes millions of dollars is fine. I'll pay the fine. I'm going back on the field. I get it. I understand the man going back on the field. But it's selfish. It's inconsiderate. And um, one of the things about COVID that people don't talk about is that for younger people, in your 30s or your late 30s, it's not really going to affect you that much, especially if you don't have any pre-existing conditions. But for older people, people who have pre-existing conditions, people who have uh, uh, asthma and you know and things that go greater than that, you can really affect those people. It can be deadly to those type of people. So that's why I say it was inconsiderate and it was selfish, right? So that's what Justin Turner with that. So that is, is, they can play good cop, bad cop with that all they want, but... I think Justin Turner was selfish, and I think the MLB is being unaccountable, and they were being they were sloppy with the COVID testing. However, however they did it, because he should not know in the eighth inning that he has to get out the game, and um, because he tested positive for COVID and he's been playing for seven innings already. That's ridiculous. That's sloppy. MLB needs to be uh, they need to get their act together. Um, got my one good bet set, one good bet segment coming for all my gamblers out there, and I got my weekend sports coming up. But first. I want to get into my week eight NFL picks. We're going to start right there from the top. Pittsburgh Steelers at the Baltimore Ravens. I have the Baltimore Ravens winning this game. The Pittsburgh Steelers showed me, they got, they showed me chinks in their armor against the Tennessee Titans last week. So I got the Baltimore Ravens uh, beating the Pittsburgh Steelers in Baltimore. My New York Jets at the uh, Kansas City Chiefs at Kansas City. This is the week where I'm going to give up on my Jets. I'm giving up on my Jets this week. My Jets, my New York Jets don't have a shot, don't have a shot in the world against the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game. They don't. I think I looked at the gambling spread. I think they were minus, I think the Kansas City Chiefs were minus 2,200 to win this game. I mean, you would have to bet 2,200 to win $100. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it alone. I'm finally picking the Chiefs. Finally. In week eight, I'm finally picking against my New York Jets. Finally. Um, and I've, I've lost every bet. The, 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 the New York Jets are... They're, they're winless. They're winless. Now, we'll talk about that Trevor Lawrence thing in another episode. Probably next Friday, we can talk about Trevor Lawrence coming to the Jets, not not one to come to the Jets. We'll talk about that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that real soon. Los Angeles Rams at the Miami Dolphins. I got Aaron Donald being all over. What's his name? Tunga Tua Tyler. I can't pronounce his name, but I know he's going to lose. I got the Rams going to 6-2 and two after beating the Miami Dolphins in Miami. Indianapolis Colts at the Detroit Lions. I have the Indianapolis Colts. Beating the Detroit Lions, I think the Detroit Lions are frauds, and I think Matt Patricia should be fired. The New England Patriots, with this, with their season on the line against their division foe, the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. The season's over. Buffalo wins this game, and the season's over for uh, the New England Patriots. We, I thought it was going to go longer. I thought we was going to figure out if Tom Brady was was the reason that the Patriots were successful, or was Bill Belichick the reason was the Patriots successful? We got that. We got our answer. It was Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the reason that the Patriots were successful. Belichick, not so much because he has Cam Newton and they're about to be two and five going against the Buffalo Bills. Um, and that's what I feel about that. Las Vegas Raiders going to Cleveland to play the Cleveland Browns. I have the Cleveland Browns winning this game without Odell Beckham Jr., who's going to be out for the season. I forgot to mention that in my huge health tips.com and sports headlines. The one and five Minnesota Vikings going to Green Bay. I heard it's going to be freezing out there this, this weekend, too. Um, going to Green Bay. To play the Green Bay Packers. I got the Green Bay Packers taking care of that business. Tennessee Titans, after their first defeat of the season, going against the Joe Burrow, Cincinnati Bengals. I like the way Joe Burrow and Cincinnati Bengals are playing. Even though they're 1-5-1, five, and one, they're competitive in every game. I like the way they're playing. I like Joe Burrow. I like that they get some weapons around them. They get some stuff around them. They get a real team around them. I like, I like the future of the Bengals. But I don't like them winning this game. I got uh, Derrick Henry running for 150. I got Derek, mark my words, Derrick Henry, 150 on the Cincinnati Bengals. And I got the Titans winning that game in Cincinnati. Los Angeles Chargers, two and four Los Angeles Chargers versus the Denver Broncos at Denver. Had the uh, Chargers, Los Angeles Chargers win this game. This game has nothing to do about nothing because I don't think either team is going to the playoffs. They don't have nothing to uh, write home about for either one of them. But I do got the Chargers winning. Um, and I like their quarterback a lot. I like that guy. All right, Tyrod Taylor. Even I feel so sorry for him, but this guy Justin Herbert is is amazing. He really is. He really, really, really is. He really is amazing. Uh, and I don't think Tyrod Taylor is ever going to get a job back. I think not with the Chargers. 
Tyrod Taylor can probably be a backup for somebody else. He can probably be a starter for somebody else, hopefully. But he's never getting his starting job back. It's over. Um, New Orleans Saints at the Chicago Bears. Now, a lot of people are going heavy on the Saints. You know what's crazy? I'm actually going to go with the Bears in Chicago. The Saints are a different team when they're outside of that dome. They really, really are. In fact, they're normal when they're outside of the dome. You can go back and look at statistics all you want. Sean Payton and Drew Brees are human outside of the dome. They don't win a lot of games in Chicago, Philadelphia, New York. Washington, when it gets real, real cold. Baltimore, when it gets real, real cold. They just don't. Uh, Carolina. Um, so I have, I actually, that's my upset pick. I got the Bears taking care of their business against New Orleans Saints at home. Right? Uh, San Francisco 49ers at Seattle Seahawks. I think Jimmy Garoppolo and the uh, San, San Francisco, I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a fraud. Complete fraud. Complete fraud. And I don't trust them at all. I don't trust them. I don't trust him. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him, as far as he can throw him. No pun intended. Uh, I got the Seattle Seahawks taking care of that business and beating the 49ers in a blowout. Mark my words, in a blowout. Seattle Seahawks in a, in a blowout to go six and one um, in that division. Two, the two and five Dallas Cowboys Sunday night game. I don't know why. Why did this game get flexed into a Sunday night game? Anyway, the Dallas, the two and five Dallas Cowboys are going to be at Philadelphia to play the Philadelphia two four and one Philadelphia Eagles. I'll put it like this. If Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles lose to this Dallas Cowboy game with Ben DiNucci as their quarterback, I think it's time. I think it's I think it's gonna be time to pull the Carson Wentz plug. I'm not an Eagles fan at all, but I know Eagles fans are very their their morale is super duper low on Carson Wentz. Let me say that again. There is low. They have a very, very low tolerance for this guy, and it's super low. It's very, it's very, 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 very low. And if Carson Wentz loses this game to the Dallas Cowboys, to this Dallas Cowboys with Ben DiNucci as starting quarterback, and the way this defense has looked, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long season. In fact, I'll go ahead and say it. I think this is this will be the final season that Carson Wentz will be the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles if he loses to this Cowboys, if he, if they lose to this, this Dallas Cowboy team. You can mark my words. Sunday night game. I don't know if I'm going to stay up Sunday night to watch the Dallas Cowboys and the Eagles. I don't know if I want to stay up for that. Monday night football game. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be at the New York Giants. Um, I think this is going to be a blowout. I actually think this game should have got flexed. I think the Saints and Bears game should have got flexed to Monday night. But um, I think this is going to be a blowout. Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa, um, Tampa, Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they take care of their business and get rid of the New York Giants. Blowout on Monday night. I might not stay up all night to watch that game either. Um, it is what it is. Uh, now it's time to get into my one good bet se- one good bet segment. Um, before I get into my one good bet segment, if you have a gambling problem, please call one eight hundred Gambler. I, I listen, listen to my one good bet segment. These bets are bets that I make personally myself as well. I don't just tell you to bet your own money. But if you do have a gambling problem, uh, use um, please call one eight hundred Gambler because I don't want to be responsible for. Your uh, gambling losses. Now, if you want to bet with me, because I'm I'm making this bet too. The the Auburn Tigers are plus one thirty six versus LSU. I like that bet. I like that bet so much that I like Auburn to to I like Auburn to win straight up. This is a straight up bet. Plus one thirty six. You know what that means? If you bet one hundred dollars on Auburn beating LSU, you'll win one hundred thirty six dollars. Plus, you'll get your hundred dollars back that you bet. So that'll be a two that'll be a two hundred and thirty six dollar payout if Auburn wins. I'm gonna make that bet. I'm not, you know, you can bet with me if you want, um, but gamble responsibly, please. Please don't hold me responsible for your losses if you in or lose. If you lose in or not, um, I don't want any winnings. If you do wind up winning, I don't. You don't have to share the winnings with me. Although I would not, I should put my cash up here. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't mind you sharing the winnings with me if I do give you a good bet. Uh, my last three weeks, I've been terrible on my one good bet segment because they've been all losses, all of them have been losses. But I think this one, this is a good one. This is a good one. I like Auburn to sneak up on LSU and win. It's an underdog bet. I like it. Um, time to get into my weekend sports. Um, of course, we got NFL Week Eight, NFL Week Eight uh, action, NCAA football action. Uh, uh, um, a ton of good games. It's not even. I can't even pinpoint one game I'm going to watch. Well, the Boston College and Clemson game just got that much interesting because Terrell Lawrence is not going to be playing, right? So um, that's that's going to be one game to look out for. 
Uh, any, all my golf fans out there, the Bermuda Championship is taking place at Port Royal Golf Course. If you get into your golf, you got the Masters coming up in about two weeks. That's going to be crazy. And the Houston Open before that, so that's going to be crazy. And my man Anderson Silva is going to have his last fight Saturday night on, Uf, uh, on UFC Fight Night on ESPN+. Plus. That's a must watch. I don't care what you're doing. ESPN Plus is about $5. You get the app. Just get. In fact, you can get a 30-day trial um, if you get it right now. Anderson Silva, legendary Hall of Famer, his last fight ever. And I think he's going to win in the second round. I'm calling the second round. I actually got a bet on that too. But um, Anderson Silva, last fight at UFC Fight Night. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you guys. Make sure you rate, subscribe, and review on whatever platform you listen to the show on. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you to my sponsors. Please go to CBDMD.com. Use the promo code MOTTO and get 15% off your entire CBD order. Go to AvaloCoffee.com. Use the promo code OFF. And get 10% off your entire coffee order. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? No, I didn't. See you guys next Friday on Off Night Radio, week nine NFL picks. Uh, and I got some more Off Night episode, podcast episodes um, coming in the near future. I'm over and I'm out of here. See you guys next Friday. <laughs>